Oh, hello, I see people joining. Thank you. Glad you're here. Hi, Pam. Hi, Pamela. We have Pamela and Pam. Just getting my laptop ready to go. And then we'll get started. Hi, Patty. Thanks, guys. Thank you all for being here. <clears throat> I am hoping to get started momentarily soon as I can get my laptop going the way I need it to. Hi, Carmen. Oh, wait, that wasn't live. I hope everybody's having a good evening. We are, we had a dreary rainy day here today, but it's okay. We needed the rain. Hi, Nora. Hi, Stacy. Good to see you all. Just trying to get my, you know, the usual um, nonsense of uh, getting all my ducks in a row on, on, um, on my laptop. For some reason I can't find. Okay, hold on. Let's see if that's gonna work. Mm -hmm. It's not working. One more. Let's try this one more time. I don't know, this um, social media stuff confuses me. One week it works, one week it doesn't. I don't get it. I gotta stop trying. Anyway, welcome everybody. For anyone that might join me that's new, I've, I've noticed lately there have been some new joiners, uh, new, new names, which I'm really happy to see. And um, that comes from everybody sharing and liking and commenting. It um, helps Facebook understand that people might actually enjoy watching a little craft video from me. So um, I appreciate all of that. So I am gonna introduce myself, Antoinette Bay with the Paper Papillion. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Limbrook, New York. So welcome and hi, Nora, we'll get started. So I pre-recorded this video for my YouTube station, which will go live tomorrow on my blog, but you might just see a, a rerun of tonight's Facebook Live because I made a mistake on my YouTube video and I, and I don't wanna really leave it there. So I used to just upload to YouTube my Facebook Lives, but there was a little bit of chitter chatter and and uh, saying hello to people. And I just kind of wanted to start keeping it uh, Facebook Lives here where they are. And um, so I started pre-recording and getting things ready ahead of time for my blog post the next day. But as I said, tomorrow's blog post may just have this video in it. So I'm not going to chit chat too much and we're gonna get right to it. And I'm hoping that I learned from the mistake that I made the other night when I was YouTubing. Uh, when I was videoing for the YouTube. So we'll see how this goes. Anyway, if you have any questions for me tonight, my email is abay at thepaperpapillion.com. And papillion is not spelled with an I-O-N. Even though I say it that way, it's supposed to be the, pap it's supposed to say papillon. It's like butterfly in French. And papillion in uh, English is a dog. I, uh, I guess it's a papillion dog. I don't really know if that's such a thing, but um, that's papillon is French for butterfly, and that's where this comes from. So there is no I at the end. It's just O N. Just F Y I. Little um, I don't I don't know. I came up with this name a long time ago with a friend of mine, 
and it's just stuck. So there you go. Little story behind that. All right, let me tell you about the products we're using tonight. Blessings of Home with along with the dyes. And let's see. Smoky Slate ink pad and the papaya and white um what is this? Half inch. I think it's just half inch ribbon. Uh fresh freesia blend. Pale papaya blend and mint macaron blends. We'll be using those. We'll be using the um, 2021-23 in color jewels. And we'll be using the Heart and Home Memories of More pack. This pack is what is included in the creative workshop. My April creative workshop is um, you're getting a pack. Not only are you getting the five make and takes, um, but you're also getting a full pack of, of this. Um, so I'll show you that later, but it's the April Creative Workshop Subscription Club starts April 1st. Subscriptions, subscriptions will be taken April 1st through April 8th. But if you want to get on the wait list for that so that I email you right away, you'll be the first to know when it opens. Um, there is a link to get on the wait list for that, okay? Uh, some of you have already gotten on that wait list. So bravo. And I'll share that with you later. We'll get more into that. So, and then you can see I'm using, I have two packs here. Um, the Heart and Home Designer Series paper. And I'm going to use this particular sheet. Um, and if you have any questions about the April subscription workshop, April uh, creative workshop, please let me know. Happy to answer. Okay, so this is the sheet that we're using, but we're not going to do this fun fold just yet. We're using a full 12 by 12 sheet to create this pocket for this fun fold. Okay, and the first thing we're going to do, which I didn't do in my video, my um, YouTube video that you'll see tomorrow, is I didn't do the stamping first, and I want to do the stamping first. There's less confusion that way. And I want to get the die cutting done first. So we're just going to take a piece of scrap and I chose this flower and smoky slate. I didn't want the harshness of black, so I did not use memento black for this. I just used smoky slate. It's nice and light and it did exactly what I wanted it to do. There we have it. And the other thing that I want to do is do my sentiment first. So I have an idea of, so I chose the sentiment, you are a real blessing to everyone around you. I just want you are a real blessing on this particular one. So I'm going to, actually I need to clean it off because it's dirty from when I was doing it the other day on my video. I'm gonna clean that off. I'm gonna use my scrap paper just to make sure it's nice and clean. And I just want it to say you are a real blessing. So everything else I'm covering up and I'm just going to ink that part up. And I want it about, about here. This is a little crooked. Let's flip that over. Let's try that again. I don't like it to be crooked. It's the way it's on the stamp, so I have to pay closer attention to, to that. Let's see if I can get it straighter this time. I don't know. Yeah, that is straighter. Good, I like that. All right, so now we are going to color the flower. And we'll put this one to the side. And I think I'll just start with the dark fresh freesia on these little flowers 
just the little dark spots on the flowers. Now I'll tell you a story about, while I'm coloring, where this fun fold came from. Because I, uh, when I first started, oh, I hope that's the flower, yes it is. When I first started in 2009 with Stampin' Up, I was taking a couple of classes here and there. Um, and actually I was introduced to a class and I just fell in love with the coordination, right? Um, Stampin' Up is very well known for the coordination of their um, inks, markers, cardstock, etc. Okay, so now I'm taking the dark mint macaron and I'm going to color in the leaves on just those dark lines. And so anyway, I started taking those classes. I, I fell in love with the product, right? But I really wanted to try, I was working part-time at the time. So I really wanted to try back then to make a small business out of this, but I really didn't know how. And I really didn't know how to use the product. So back then it was a little bit before all the Pinterest started and before I got actually more familiar with measurements and things like that. I used to purchase tutorials and there was this one woman and her name was Andrea Walford. I don't know if anybody here might know who she is. She's an artist and she worked for Stamp It Up. If she does still, I don't know. I mean, not work for them. She was a demonstrator for them. But she created these amazing tutorials. I mean, I don't know how much time was put into them. So I was, oh, let me stop for a second. I used the dark. Now I'm using the light mint macaron to just fill in. Anyway, she's an artist and she created these amazing tutorials. I, graphics and step-by-step -step and every detail about how much every item was going to cost. It was broken down that way. It was very, very, very detailed. Okay, I'm getting warm. Gotta stop. The lights make it very warm under what, where I'm working. Okay, so I was purchasing them. I don't remember how much they were. They might've been like $25, um, a tutorial. So it's kind of expensive back then. So, when I, I piled them up, I put them in a binder. I used them back then. And then probably, I don't know, when Pinterest started and all the social media started and everybody was posting, I didn't need to buy tutorials anymore because I had learned the measurements and things like that. And I could eyeball things if I wanted to um, recreate them because I was familiar with the product um, as well. Now I'm using the dark just to go over in some area, areas on the stem. Um, so I stopped buying them. I think she stopped doing them. I think she stopped as a demonstrator at some point. This is the dark pale papaya. And then she came back. And I don't know if she's back again. But I don't really think she does these tutorials anymore. Not with the way social media is and, and whatnot. But anyway... That binder made its way to my desk the other day, uh, let's say a couple of weeks ago. And while I was cleaning out some stuff, and I decided, hmm, there were four uh, fun folds in this tutorial. So I'm making the first of the four, and I'll be sprinkling, sprinkling in the other three here and there on a Facebook Live. So this is called, the fun fold that we're going to be doing tonight, she called it um, Single Pocket Crisscross Card. She doesn't say fun fold anywhere on the tutorial, but she calls it Single Pocket Crisscross Card. So if anybody wants to look that up on 
Pinterest, feel free. You might come across it somewhere. I, I haven't looked at Pinterest for it because I have it right here. And I can't share it with you because it was a purchase tutorial. Um, so I cannot share it with you. Anyway, there's the coloring. And now we're ready to do some die cutting. So that's where this um, fun fold came from. Um, and we'll bring over the die cutting machine now. And I think I can use just my mini. I don't think there's anything that I need. A, we just have a few leaves to die cut and this flower and that's it. So, was she in Canada? Yes, Stacy. I just saw your question. Yes, she was in Canada. So, I don't know. How long have you been around, Stacy? I mean, you know, as far as Stampin' Up! is concerned. If you're familiar with her, then you must be around for a little while, like me. Okay, let's do those pieces. And, oh, I forgot one. Gail says, love the hand pen set. I love that set too. That's not what we're using tonight though. It's for, it looks very much like the hand pen set. If, if this is um, Heart and Home, this one, uh, Blessings of Home, Gail. Um, okay, so let's get that. This is called Blessings of Home, but it is very similar to Hand Penned. And yes, Hand Penned is my favorite. And I also will talk about the new catalog a little bit. Oh, I don't know if I got that on all the way. Um, this is going to be in the new catalog, this set. That comes out, is it May 1st? As a demonstrator, we get to pre-order specific items on April 1st. As a, demo, as a customer, you get to order on May 1st. I am going to be sending out my newsletter. That brings me to another note. So if you're not on my newsletter, you want to get on it. Because if you're a customer of mine or um, you have, in the last six months, spent a, a, a minimum order with me, I'll be sending you a catalog, a brand new catalog in the last six months if you've ordered with me. Um, but if you don't need a catalog, please let me know. Um, if you're a demonstrator and you don't need it uh, and then you've ordered with me because it gets a little pricey with the, you know, um, I need a big, bigger piece with shipping and, and the catalog itself. So it, there'll be a, a link um, on the newsletter, if you want one to register for one, so I can mail you a catalog. All right. So mint macaron and pale papaya. Those are the colors we're using. Okay. So if you're not on my newsletter, you want to get on it. Um, I have some announcements to make in my newsletter <clears throat> and the link is below it will it should be in the description here on Facebook to get on my newsletter and if you're interested in the April uh, creative workshop that link is there for the wait list um, I have a limited quantity that I'm going to be able to make um, of the April because of the amount that is in that um, kit. What happened was I completely forgot that I was including this full pack. So I went a little nuts with the cards and the um, items that are on the cards. So this premiere um, creative workshop is a little heavy in the die cutting department where normally they won't be as heavy. Um, so you want to get on that. All right. And I'll share that later as you, as I mentioned. Okay. So the next thing we want to do here is we're going to put some 
designer series paper down right here. And I'm not, I, I originally put some ribbon here too, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put the paper down. I don't care for how it really looks with the ribbon too much anyway. So this is a piece from that set. And I'm just going to line it up right here. And then I'll trim this piece that's hanging off. I think I went to my first party sometime and, oh, so yeah, you've been doing this for a while. Oh, oh no, that's right. I thought I put it on the wrong side. You've been around for a while, Stacy. Oh, Pam, wait, I want to thank you for doing an actual class. Everyone else seems, oh, I, I, I know, um, but you're very welcome. <laughs> Thank you for saying so. Okay, so then we're gonna put this on here, like that, all right? So let me get my mat. And I think I'm gonna use some liquid glue for this one. So next week, I'm going to introduce you, reintroduce you to a dye that is going to be in the annual catalog. I'm not going to say what it is at the moment, but it is a returning die. So since I still own it, I'm going to use it. I was playing around the other day with this particular die and I was very sad that it had retired because it was a celebration item. And lo and behold, I took a good look at the new catalog online. We don't have them in our hands yet. I took a good look at it online and I saw them in the die section. Okay, so um, we're using this ribbon. I already have a piece here and I'm going to pull some of the threads out. And let's see if I can do this with this. Now my fingers are a little sticky. Pull some of these threads out because I wanna make a nice bow. All right, these are very fine, like hair. Very, very fine. Let's see if I can get those pulled neatly Oop, making a mess this isn't the easiest thing to do but i i have managed to do it oh no something just happened to my laptop i hope you guys are still there okay there we go just have to play a little bit and be a little patient with it but i'm going to make it real small real small bow um because we are going to use it Oh, goodness gracious. It's a mess. It isn't usually this messy, but this one's a little bit messy. I think it's because I have glue on my fingers. All right, we're still gonna use it, even though it's a little messy. All right, I'm gonna put some, a little dot here. Okay, put a little dot. If it wasn't dried up. That's a big dot. Okay. And just put that right there. Hold it down for a second. So anyway, that's the story behind the fun fold tonight and also that I'll be using a returning die from the from a, one of the celebrations that we had next week since I still own it. All right, so that's done. We're going to put this right on this base. This is a 
another great um, Mother's Day. Oh, you know what? I just realized you are a real blessing. I was going to use a different stamp set for the inside because I'm um, using a different stamp for the outside than I did on my original. Oh, well, it'll still work. Okay, so now I'm going to take my one inch punch that is retired, but I would never get rid of any kind of circle punch. And let me put these away before I lose them. Then I'm going to put some adhesive and wrap it around the top. I'm gonna eyeball the center and that doesn't look quite centered. That's a little bit better. Okay, and then fold it over. This is gonna be where the, the gift card holder goes, but for now, we're going to just do this part and then we'll move on to that later once we cut the paper. Now I have my Stampamajig, this is pretty old. So if you have something like it, sorry for that loudness, or something that can punch a hole right here. There you go. And then we'll take some of the shorter ribbon and pull some of those strands out as well. This is really easy to come out actually. Now I'm gonna do my best to get this through without ruining it. So I just folded it over and now I'm going to try to get it through here. Okay. Not too bad. Now I'm gonna grab these long ones. So I just used my tweezer to help me get that nicely through that hole and looped through. So now I might use my tweezers again to get it through the loop. Let me get all these strands together and help me get it through the loop. There we go. And voila. Now they're way too long. I'm gonna cut some of those hairs. There you have it. Okay, so we'll leave that to the side. Oh, I forgot these were supposed to go on. Oh goodness. All right, let me slip this through. I'm just gonna lift this a little bit. Can't believe I forgot that. I don't wanna ruin it, but I do wanna get those in there. You might have to just cut this down a little bit and use a glue dot to get that in there. All fixed. And then we'll do the same here and get these in here. Just gonna have to do a little surgery here, right? Just a little surgery. It's not been glued down that long, so. And then I'll do the same with the glue dot and slip that through. And then this one just makes a little bit of a difference to have this behind, behind there, right? Makes a little bit of a difference. Okay, there, we're good there. All right. Now we can move on to the fun fold. And we'll leave that there and we'll wait for the gift card part. Okay, ready? Let's, now, I'm going to do my scoring on this 12 by 12. Now I wanna look at the, there's a little bit of a delay, but I wanna make sure that you can see this and it looks like you can, so, 
I want to make sure, I'm gonna show you a, a sample too. So we're going to start with a three and seven eighths score line right here. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right, the line right before the four on my scoring tool. I ain't gotta be gentle with this because it's designer series paper, not cardstock. Now I'm gonna flip this all the way around to the other side and do the same exact measurement on the other side because I want the same exact measurement. Now I'm going to turn it around and then the first mark, score mark down here is four inches. Now let me use the larger size. And then the next is nine and a half. Okay, so this is a four by four square down here now. I have three four by four squares. And then this is smaller, this is two inches by four. So it's the smaller side up here we're gonna work with. Okay. And before we do any of that, we're going to give it a nice, give every score line a nice crease. Okay. And I'll come up with a diagram, a handwritten diagram. I don't know how to do those fancy diagrams. Um, so I'll come up with a handwritten diagram to post to my blog. I'll do it shortly after this video. That way you can see So like I said, down here we have four by four, and up here we have, it's like two by four. So this is where we're cutting this, these smaller rectangles, okay? And I need to see where exactly I'm cutting. So I'm gonna get one big cut there, and another cut on this score line, which may be too far out. I may need to do that again. This is not a perfect score line because I can hardly see it because the paper's white. So this is what I'm saving for the back of the gift card. And then we'll do this one. And then go up this way. And I need to cut that a little bit further as well. So if you're going to do this, I would suggest playing with an old piece of designer series paper. Okay, so the next part is I'm going to take my little corner rounder and right up here. So this is what it looks like if you want to, hopefully you could see that. I'll bring this up. I don't know if you can see it all, but now we're going to give this a little corner round. So if you own a corner rounder, you might want to do that. And if you own like the envelope punch board, the back of that has a corner rounder you could use. Okay. So the next part is to take these two flap corners here and we're going to just bring them right into the score line, the four inch score line on each side. Okay, just gonna bring those, that in to that. So let me make sure, yep. Okay, so I can give that a crease. And now this one goes this way, right to the score line. And I have a sample cut where uh, I will, um, that also diagrams um, what this looks like. Okay, now we're going to get to tear and tape. So all the cutting's done, now it's tear and tape. So right below this four inch, this uh, score line on the bottom, we're gonna put 
some tear and tape right up to the next, okay, hopefully you can see that, right up to the score line. So down in the bottom and right up to the score line. Then we're going to do this side. We're going to do this right below the score line here. And then on the bottom, and then on the side here, on this one, on the right side only, I'm gonna put this one. And then right above, right below this and above this. Okay, so there's our tear and tape for now. We're going to use that again. So the next thing we're doing is removing this side first. And you want a nice crease here. So this is going to fold in. This stays like that. And this, hold on, might be off a little bit because I didn't cut it well enough. So what I just did is I just pushed it out a little bit so it'll fold in. Make sure you're lined up nicely. And then you'll have about a quarter or a half inch, a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, of space here. It won't go flush against the next score line. It's not supposed to. So you're supposed to have a little space right here. Okay, so there's that. And then the next part is to fold the other side over. And we'll do that by taking these off. Oops. Oops. Okay. okay, so now this has to stay in and fold that over. So it lines up at the bottom. Might be a little bit crinkly up here, but you should be just fine. So here is your pocket. And the tear and tape that's here is preventing, will prevent the card from going all the way down. Now we need our tear and tape again. I would not suggest doing this with anything but tear and tape or whatever you have, some sort of double-sided strong tape. So from here to the score line and from here to the score line, okay? And then on the bottom, from one side of the, one piece of the tape to the other. I might need to clean that off for a second. Okay, so we're taking off all three, but we're not closing it up just yet. We're going to, we're taking off all three of the backings, but we need to cut a 20 inch piece of ribbon. So where is my ribbon? Here we go. So I'm going to take, hold on, uh, my old Stampin' Up mat that I don't know why I don't use this. I have a huge mat on my desk. That's probably why. So I want about 20 inches. Uh-oh, am I frozen? No. Okay. So this goes up to about, that's 15, 16, 17 you can't see this all the way to the right, but I'm gonna bring it back another three inches. So that's one, two, three. And here I'm going to cut, I know you can't see me all the way to the right, but I'm cutting so that I am going to have exactly 20 inches. 
and I just needed my big mat for that. Oops. Okay. Alrighty. Let's put this to the side. All right. So now I, I'm going to take my 20 inch piece of ribbon. Now her directions said to get a 16 inch piece of ribbon, but she, hers was a knot. I wanted a bow. And I also discovered, and I'll, and I'll tell you, now I'm going to kind of see where the center is here. It's, that's where I want this ribbon to sit, right at the very bottom of the card and covering all of the tear and tape at the bottom. All right. Just like that. So now I have an even piece on the left and the right. Go like that. The next step is to add two small pieces of tear and tape to each side here. And then we're going, going to close this up. You love that mat, yep. I should use it on this table because it's small enough. And my other one is huge on the, you know, it's like 35 by 40 inches on the other table. Okay, so now we're going to, we have tear and tape on each side and now right there on the ribbon. We're going to fold this up. And there we have it. Before we do anything else, I wanna give everything a really good crease with the bone folders. Bone, bone folder. Now mine's a little bit off on this side because I didn't cut it right. So when you're cutting your score lines, it was just so hard to see this one. Okay. And now we're gonna wrap that up later, okay? Let's put that, uh, actually, we're not gonna put that to the side yet. We're going to actually finish decorating the front. So I have this little small piece and I'm going to cut a little flag on the end. So I'm gonna go up the middle and then the sides like that. And I don't want it to be too, too long. So I think I'm just gonna put it on and then cut off where I, I want it to stop. All right. Okay. Um, and let's see. Oh, I think I made it too long still. Still too long. Yeah, that's better. All right, so then the back here, I'm going to cut that piece off. Okay. So this is where my cards come in. Oh, wait. Yeah, this is where the cards come in. Let's see. My memories and more cards. So for this one, I was going to use the happy birthday tag. Um, where are they? Where are all the... Hmm, this is weird. Oh, here they are. Okay. So in the back, um, so there's the happy birthday. Some of them I've used already. Um, let's see. Thankful for you. Well, you know what? We're going to do another thankful for you because of what I stamped on the card. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the little sticker that says thankful for you again. And before we do that, we are going to take some more of that thread and pull out just a little bit more of the, of the thread. And it goes, let me tell you, this little piece goes a long way. Uh, this little piece, I did three cards. This is the third card I'm doing using the same piece that I've already pulled apart. Now, this might be tougher because I think there's a knot. I got a knot in there somewhere. 
Hmm. Okay. Let's see. There we go. All right. So I'm going to put some adhesive down and I'm just going to play with this. I could hang off right there. Do a little figure eight. Like that. Maybe not quite so figure eight-ish. I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll leave it like that. I could have done a little bit more with that, but I don't want it to be too sloppy either. Okay, I'm leaving it like that. Okay, now I'll take the thankful for you and put some dimensionals behind there. It's sticky, but I want it to have the, the raised look, not flat. I'll put thankful for you right there. And this is another going to be another great Mother's Day card. Or for anyone that you're thankful for, right? Okay, let's put this over. Let's put these cards away. Let's clean up a little bit here. Okay. And then we're going to take some of these rhinestones for which I already have a pack open, I believe. If I can find them. Yep. There they are. I think I have enough. And we'll use the same um, that I used on the others, which is, I might not have enough here. Oh yeah, I do. Okay, I'm gonna use the uh, Fresh Freesia. Um, where are my tweezers? They're probably right in front of me and I don't see them. Anybody see my tweezers? Oh, here they are, they're underneath the mat. Isn't that amazing? All the time. All the time. Disappear. So let's put one here and a smaller one right next to it. And then I need a larger one. Do I have any more? Yep. Just make it one more right down here. So that's the front. Put this to the side. I could have used the um, Evening Evergreen too, but I don't know. Let's see. I'm just going to peel this one off for a second. Let's see. I don't know. I kind of like that. This one's kind of light. Let's go with this one. Let's go with the evening evergreen for this one because the other two I did this pale color. Let's try that. Kind of looks nice. Besides, then it saves me a few more. Oh, yeah, that looks pretty, I think. You think? And I think that looks pretty. And now let's go with back to the insert, the card for the inside before we close this up. So we have this leftover pieces, right? And it should be about the same size here. Yep, it's slightly smaller. So this measures, um, here's my ruler. This measure measures three and three quarters. So I need to have this piece measure three and three quarters. Three and three quarters. And I want it to be nice and I want the bottom isn't very neat because it's where I cut and I want it to be neat. So now I'm going to take my punch and kind of just eyeball the center, left to right, right there. Okay, there we have it. And let's see if it's too big. It's even slightly big. So I'm just gonna bring it down just a little bit more to maybe two and a half inches. I think that should be fine. And I should have brought down one of my gift cards, but I forgot, but it fits perfectly. So let's get some tear and tape going again. So we're going to do tear and tape on each side. Whoops. That's okay. A little too close. And the bottom. So that way. 
Okay. Now let's pull that off. So I think I'm going to, like I said, sprinkle in the other three. And one of them is going to be, or maybe two of the pocket folds are going to be for Father's Day. I'm going to make them specifically for Father's Day. Now, I've had a look at the new catalog online, and there's some cute stuff in there. And I'm kind of looking forward to April 1st when I can order, pre-order some of it as a demonstrator. Now, up here, I might take another piece and secure this, but we're going to put a little... Um, now, my other two, I put uh, one of these. I don't have any left of it. Um, there was a sentiment that I used. Let's see. Is it here? But I don't think there's any more. Um, I'll show you what I used on the back for you right up there, but I don't have any more of those. I There were only two in the pack and I used it on the two samples that I made. So I'm going to use a B. I think that works. I think a B will be nice right up there. Yeah, it kind of looks cute, right? That's cute. So this is where your card's gonna go and you can either write a little note here or continue it on the back, maybe even put another piece of white but yeah, your, your gift card's gonna go slip right in there, nice and tight. It's gonna be a nice and tight fit in there. So this is the card that goes inside the pocket that we just created. And I hope that this one went much better than my the one that I created the other night for the YouTube. So this is definitely gonna go up on the blog tomorrow instead of the YouTube one. So let's put that inside, okay? See how the card doesn't move now? It just goes right in there. Fold this and let's make a bow. Now, if you want this a little bit longer, you can make it longer. But I think that once you tie the bow, um, the tutorial was a knot and it was meant to knot and unknot. But I think that once you tie this bow, you don't have to undo it and I'll show you. You definitely don't have to undo it. Okay, I'm going to cut my ends really pretty. Whoops. Let's do that again. Okay, so there's the pocket. So what I mean by that, and this could be a little bit neater. I didn't do a great job down there, but, um, and you can even put some glue dot if you feel comfortable. Oh no, you can't put a glue dot because I would just open it up like this and not undo the, the knot and go like that. And there's your gift card. So let's put it back so I can show you what I mean. Just slip it back right under there. I guess the fear is that the paper would get ruined, but I think it's pretty good, just like that. So it can be, you know, reused. So let me just bring out my samples. So here's how it looks with the fresh freesia. Do you like the fresh freesia rhinestones or, or the green ones, the evening evergreen? Um, so let me undo this one. Oh, where's my card? Oh, here it is. Where is it? silly. So here's where I put the ribbon. Okay. Um, I don't know. I guess it's okay. It just looked a little heavy with the ribbon. So I'm going to put this one in here and do the same. And then I have one more. I think my original, my original is right here. Or maybe this is the YouTube one. Oh no, this is the one I did on YouTube because I made another mistake on YouTube when I was doing it for YouTube. I forgot to put the Fresh Freesia backing. So this one's a dud. It's a dud. So let's look, just look at it this way with the finished product from tonight on the left and my sample that came out right on the right. Why is that 
I don't know why that's stuck. Okay, there we go. So that way you have an idea of what it, the inside looks like, right? So there you have it. So if you want to take, let me, before I do anything else, if you want to take a picture of this, okay, I took some old cards, uh, designer series paper, right? So this would have been here. I don't know where the other side is, but it would have been here. So that's what you would have cut, right? And then that folded in. Let me see. And then here's the, the tape, how the tape looks, right? And then, so I'm just gonna leave that there for a second, all right? And then I'll fold this side, and then you fold that side, and then you have your 20 inch piece of ribbon with your tear and tape here and tear and tape down here, and then you have your ribbon going over and two pieces of tear and tape so that way when you fold it up, it will stay glued, all right? I hope that helps a little bit, but I'll do a diagram and add it to the blog post for tomorrow, okay? There you have it. All right, somebody's gonna get this tonight. I am gonna be drawing just a little bit, which is the one, this is the one we made tonight. So this is the one that someone is going to get. Oh, and here is, so you can take all of your old designer series paper. Here's another, um, I did not decorate this. I was practicing also with this paper. So, and this pretty ribbon. So I'm gonna finish this up at some point too. Um, so if you have, you know, 12 by 12 paper laying around, this is a great way to really, oh, I'm not gonna play with that now. That's a great way to really use it, isn't it? Because I have a lot of 12 by 12 paper and this is a great way to use it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, in a couple of weeks, I'll do another fun fold. And then in a couple of weeks after that, I'll start doing some Father's Day. I'll do the last two in Father's Day. Um, or specifically for males. Okay, before I do our prize patrol, I want to show you um, the creative workshop. And I'm hoping that it's not too heavy in the camera here, too big. So a lot of times when I do a subscription, I use my old um, scoring, uh, what do you call this? The, the envelope board for at least one car gets a special envelope, okay? And I use this. And in the pack, as I mentioned, this April one is very heavy in die cutting. I created five projects because I forgot that you were getting an entire pack of Heart and Home in your kit. So I'm going to open up your kits and take this deck of cards right here and put some on the other side so it's a little bit flatter and not as bulky when it goes in your package. So you're getting one full pack and a half a pack, okay? So here's a full pack, but you're getting half a pack of my favorite iridescent uh, rhinestones, which I'm happy to say are carrying over to the new catalog because they are absolutely my favorite right now, okay? So that is gonna be in your kit. And your kit will come to you all right, this is how it's packed inside. You're going to have a piece of paper here with my logo, Creative Workshop, and links. Even though I email it to you, your pack will have links in it so that if you're not making it right away, you're making it in the future and you toss this somewhere, that sheet of paper with those links are in here. And if I can get it together, I may even have a QR code. So you just take your phone, if you're at a crop, you take your camera on that QR code and it'll bring you right to the YouTube videos. I'm hoping to get that fancy soon, we'll see. So anyway, this is the package that it's gonna come in. And I've noticed that quite a few of you have already signed up for the wait list, I'm very excited. Um, so it comes to you like this in this pink package. Don't mind this, this is my scraps. And then, let me take this away. Um, you get 
just let me show you what you're getting here for $39 plus shipping if, if you're not a porch pickup. So like I said, that sheet of paper will be in here and you'll undo this. And then in each envelope are all your die cut pieces. Everything you need, you're going to need ink and stamps. There's everything. So all of these have been completely done for you. All you're going to have to do is follow the YouTube video and use your ink and your stamps because this does not require you to own the heart and home stamp set because um, you're using the cards from the pack. This is the um, fun fold and the envelope. This is all, this is the fun fold card and the envelope that goes with it. Some of them will have this paper and some of them are going to have this paper, just FYI. And I will show you again what the cards look like. So this is a set right here. So that's five projects, one, two, three, four, five. And this is exactly how it comes packed to you. Everything is really neat. Now, is there an occasion where I might forget something? Mm. At, at times I've forgotten a piece of white cardstock or something like that. I'll be perfectly honest. It doesn't happen often, but if it does, we're all crafters. We have it. If it's major, I'll mail it to you, but I do try very hard not to have that happen because it just costs too much money to have to have those kinds of mistakes made. So I'm just going to move this aside and quickly flash the cards. One, two, three, four, and five. There you go. That's your kit. Get on that April subscription wait list. So let me just explain. The wait list is now through April 1st. And once you're on that wait list, it just means that you're going to be emailed on April 1st to be reminded that the subscription period has opened. And the subscription period is April 1st to the 8th. So you wanna get on that wait list so you know right away. And if you want to do it for just one month, you just do it for one month and you cancel. If you want to just continually be on the automated system where uh, PayPal will bill you every other month because this is a bi-monthly subscription, it is not a monthly subscription. So if I didn't say that earlier, I'm sorry. It is $39 every other month. And if it needs to be shipped, you're going to have to add $6 for shipping. I'm hoping that this package won't be more. But like I said, I forgot about that heavy. It's not that it's not going to cost you more because I put $6 as it is. So it's just going to be $6. All right. Like I said, the link for that is in the description here. So Let's get started with Price Patrol. Is there anything else I need to tell you? Oh, if you like any of the products that I use tonight, um, there is still the sale going on to March, 30, March 31st for any of these items that you see here and the mini cut emboss machine that I use tonight. You can purchase there's a last chance list. I have not gotten that up. It will be in my newsletter when I get it, but a lot of sale items in here going on right now. And so you can purchase from the mini catalog and the annual catalog, a $35 minimum order. Use purchasing anything you want will get you, um, I have them right here because, hold on, a lot of you have been taking advantage, so. Hold on one second. Uh, I'm sorry. So a lot of you have been taking advantage, so I've been making a lot of these. Um, you had the choice of two of the four gift bag gift card holders that I made. So you had your you had your choice of two of the four. As long as you used the host code provided here, you could pick two of them and I will make them for you. So a lot of you have also taken advantage of that and I'm still offering it until March 31st. I'm still using the same host code. So 
you can make a $35 minimum purchase in my online store and pick any of uh, two of the four colors here and I will make them and mail them to you for free. Okay, that's the host code, $35 minimum order. All right, let me just put this back just in case you need it and let's do our drawing for this. All right, now I really gotta make sure that you do not see my reflection because I gotta get my hair done this weekend. Hold on. Let's see, I have everybody in here. And let's see. All right. Okay, can you see that? Oop, wrong way. Let's see, yeah, you can see that. So let me put this here. So these are um, the names of everyone that commented and shared last week. Bring that down a little bit so you can see. And I am going to spin. Who was it? Pam Simmons. Pam, congratulations. You won tonight's card. I know that you've been, you were here tonight. I don't know if you're still here, but congratulations. You won tonight's card. I don't think you've won. And I don't know if I have your address, Pam. So Pam Simmons, if you're still on, please email me at this email address, your mailing address, and I will get it out to you, if not over the weekend, by early next week. All right. Thank you all very much for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed this um, fun fold tutorial. And I hope you join me back here at seven o'clock Eastern time next Thursday, which is what it is the 31st. April 1st is Friday already. Goodness gracious. How are we in April almost? I don't know. But anyway, Thanks again. I really appreciate you all being here, sharing, liking, comments. Um, it, like I said, helps me get noticed on Facebook and YouTube. And like I keep saying, I'm pretty soon I'm going to stream to Facebook and YouTube. Um, but I really haven't taken the time to learn that new software. And when I do, it will go to both places. So anyway, thanks again. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.